So we are going to do some pickle brined chicken. Uh, we have both chicken thighs and drumsticks, so it's kind of a random assortment of chicken. The good news is they all cook at the same time and temperature, uh, and the pickle brine is, is going to be great. So if you don't know what brining is, uh, there's two ways to brine. One is to soak your meat or your poultry or even your fish in a liquid with seasonings. Um, and then the theory is that, not a theory, this is what happens, the meat absorbs that moisture. So it keeps um, the meat very moist and it'll, it'll absorb that flavor with the moisture. In this case, we're gonna uh, bring in some salt and some, some uh, light dill flavor into the meat itself. Um, the other way to brine is just cover in salt, put it in the fridge, and that's called a dry brine where uh, the salt will pull out the moisture and then the meat will reabsorb the moisture pulling the salt in. We're doing a wet brine and it's very easy. So what I have here is a briner bucket. This is, uh, they have a couple sizes. This is the eight quart, so two gallon size. Uh, you can see here it's, it's pretty big. This could fit a, a whole chicken, no problem, and probably a smaller turkey as well. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna open this chicken up. We are going to put it in here then we're gonna add our brine. In this case, it's pickle juice. And then once we add the brine, we then take this handy dandy top, we slide it in, and then you lock the meat in place. The reason this is helpful is because it will hold the chicken under the liquid. So if you just wanna brine in like a pot, which you can do, you can use a pot from your, you know, that you use to boil water, you can put your brine and your meat in there and put that in the fridge. The meat will float. So part of that meat will be above the water. So some people put plates and stuff like that to keep the entire thing submerged. Uh, but I have a brine bucket. So I'll link to Amazon uh, if you wanna check it out. They're not very expensive. Uh, the only issue is there's no free shipping, but uh, I'll link to Amazon, take a look. There's other options if you want as well. Um, for now, I'm gonna open this up, put the chicken in here, then we will add our brine, close it up, and then it goes into the fridge. It is uh, like 11 a.m. right now, and we're probably eating like five, six, something like that. This does not need to be an overnight, two-day thing. If we were doing a whole turkey, it certainly should be, but we're just doing some drumsticks and some chicken thighs, a couple of hours. You know, the longer you have, the better. There is a point where it's too much, but a couple of hours is perfectly fine. So. Let's get this loaded up. We'll put our brine in, we'll put it in the fridge, and then we'll come back when it's time to light our fire uh, and do the full cook. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It's about, I would say, halfway up. And this was two pounds of drumsticks, two pounds of chicken thighs. So this is about four pounds of meat. It's about halfway up. The reason you put the meat in first is because otherwise you have no judge for how much liquid you want to put in. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the pickle juice. You have a million different options. You can just buy giant pickle containers or a bunch of little ones, open them, pour the pickle juice in, save the pickles. I found this at Walmart. It's also on Amazon if you wanna, don't feel like going to Walmart. Um, and uh, it's easy. So I have a full gallon, it's just the pickle juice itself. So let's go ahead and we'll pour this in. And what you wanna do when you pour it in is you wanna get it to just above the meat itself, right? I don't need to fill this to the brim. I just need to get this to cover the meat. So right about there, I'm tilting it, so you're gonna get a weird angle, but right about there is good. And now we're gonna lock it in. And when I do that, I push down and if you get a peek into here, when I lock it in, I push down and you can see none of that chicken is sticking out. It is all completely submerged and that's where that like little deflector plate, whatever you wanna call it, that's the point of that is to keep this down. If that wasn't there, the chicken would be floating at the top. So I'm gonna close this or put the lid on. Then I gotta wipe everything down because we have chicken juice everywhere. Uh, and I'm gonna get this into my refrigerator uh, and we're gonna come back in you know four or five hours, whatever it is, uh, and then start our cook. This is a typical chicken cook for me. So for me, if you've watched my other videos, you know I like crispy skin. Um, so we're gonna do 350 for an hour, 
And if our skin's not crispy, we'll kick up the temp, but 350 for an hour, we'll get our skin crispy. This will get, uh, you know, the, the chicken will be nice and cooked. So let's get this in the fridge and then we will come back when it's time to light our fire and do the rest of the cook. All right, it's uh, about an hour and a half or so before we want to eat. So I know my fire takes about a half an hour to get ready. This is about an hour long cook. So I'm just reverse engineering it. So got the fire, uh, just started the fire here. So. We gotta let this catch and let the charcoal all, uh, you know, let that fire circulate in the box here. I'll drop some wood in. Uh, I just wait till the fire catches before I put my wood in. Uh, I'll be probably doing some apple or some cherry, just a lighter fruit wood since we're doing chicken. Um, and then we'll go in the house. We will dry off our chicken. Uh, once this fire's all set, we're looking for 350. Once this is at 350, uh, we'll go ahead and get our chicken on and it'll be about an hour. So. I'm gonna let this catch, we'll go inside, we'll get our chicken ready. Um, if the fire's ready when we're done with that, great. If not, we'll get our heat deflectors on, we'll wait for it to come up. So let's go inside and dry out that chicken. Okay, it has been four hours, five hours, something like that. This brine is plenty done. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the chicken out of this bucket. We are going to dry it off. It has to be as dry as we can get it. We don't have to rinse it, but we do have to dry it. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and season it. So uh, we have the all-purpose from Meat Church and Honey Hog from Meat Church. This is nice and sweet. This is just an all-purpose rub, so it's got some pepper, some uh, some salt, etc. So I'm just going to, I don't know, mix these up and, and do some variations. The kids are eating too, so nothing spicy. So um, yeah, let's go ahead, get this chicken out, get it nice and dry, season it up. Drumsticks are going on the rack. This is the most convenient thing on the planet, but drumsticks are going on the rack. And then the, uh, the chicken thighs will just go directly on the grill itself. So let's go ahead and dry this up. Actually, before I start that, very quick tip. So this, we have our, you know, the, the plate in here that's holding all the chicken down. I'm gonna leave that in. I'm gonna pour this into the sink and, the sink and then I'll take the chicken out instead of, you know, dunking my hands into this, you know, bobbin for apples situation. Okay, it's all dried off. You can see how dry this is. The, there's really no liquid on the cutting board at all, so we dried it really well. Now we're going to hit it with a touch of olive oil and uh, start to season it up. Let's get these on. We're gonna have to do some maneuvering. We'll put this chicken in the back, and then we are just gonna load these chicken thighs up wherever they fit. And it's okay, it's okay if they overlap. Uh, these are thin, these are actually probably gonna cook pretty quick. 
but um, we will see. Let's just get these on here. We'll get everything going. And uh, I'm estimating an hour or so for those. This will probably go faster, but we'll see what happens. As long as they're not burning, they will be good. Let's get them on here. Okay, so we've got everything on. Uh, the drumsticks are probably gonna cook a little fat, uh, uh, take a little longer than the, uh, the chicken thighs here, because these are pretty thin. But we're just gonna close this lid, let this go. It's about an hour. An hour gets us well beyond the 165 internal temp that we need. But I will come back and I'll check these with a thermopan after like 20 minutes. But I'm also gonna flip these. These are thin, I'm gonna flip them so they cook evenly. I don't have to touch these drumsticks at all. I'm gonna close my lid. Uh, and we'll just come back in 20 minutes or so. No spraying or anything like that. I'm just coming back to check the temp of these and flip these over. So let's close this lid and uh, I'll be back in a bit. Right, let's check, see where we are. Do my flipping. Oh, just picked off a nice piece there. Okay, I have my instant read. So let's just go ahead and see where these thighs are. Okay, 150. Okay, they're about 150. So um, those need a few more minutes. Uh, it's been about 25 or 30 minutes or so. So these are super thin. That's why I knew they would cook a little faster. So let me shut this lid. We'll let those continue to cook. And then we will come back in another, you know, 10 We'll check the thighs again. If those are done, we'll pull them, and then we'll let the drumsticks continue to cook. So I know I said I would come back in 10 minutes, but I am back in five because I'm just gonna put some barbecue sauce on these chicken thighs, um, and then we'll let it go, uh, you know, five more to let it tack up. We'll put some nice sauce on here. And the drumsticks, I'm not gonna sauce till later because those have a little longer to go. Okay. All right, so we've got this sauced up. I'm gonna let it go five more minutes, and then we'll take these off once that sauce is uh, reduced and tacky. Okay, chicken thighs are definitely done. So I'm gonna take these off. And if you remember, I have a hot spot in the back of the grill. A lot of these Kamados tend to do that for some reason. So I'm gonna rotate this and, and move it a little closer to the front. And we'll actually just poke one or two real quick to check the temp on those. Um, I don't think they're ready, but they might be. And uh, if they're close to ready, I'm going to kick up the temp so that we can get that, that skin nice and crispy. Okay. Let's check this one. Hard to push in there. No, not yet. So we still have a little bit of time here, so let's move. I did not bring gloves. Let's move this. Rotate it. And we are gonna paint on some barbecue sauce. I normally dunk, but we're just gonna paint it on because I don't want a ton. But yes, normally I would dunk these, take them off, dunk them in the cup, but I just don't feel like getting my gloves. I already had the brush and everything, so we're going to do it this way. And this will make your heat deflectors dirty, so you can put a water pan underneath or just a pan underneath to collect all this stuff. But um, I'm going to be doing pizzas tomorrow, so that is going to burn everything off. So I don't need to necessarily worry about a dirty heat deflector. Okay. All right, we've got these sauced. I'm going to close the lid. We'll let them go another 10, 15 minutes. And then I'm going to just open the vents wide open and do another 5, 10 after that to get it crispy. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. So I'm going to, these are pretty much done. I'm gonna close this lid and we will open all of our vents. 
to get more heat and get it nice and crispy and watch that temperature climb. So we'll be back uh, in about 10 minutes and we'll have some, some crispy barbecue chicken all done. Uh, we had some of those uh, dr um, thighs inside. They're, they're freaking amazing. The pickle brine keeps it juicy. It adds flavor. It's, it's unbelievable. Those came out amazing. I'm assuming these drumsticks will be too. But uh, we'll give it another 10 minutes and we'll go ahead and take these off. Okay, we should be done. Let me just poke one. See that juice pouring out of there? And that is exactly why we pickle brine. So we are done. I'm gonna close this anyway. We are done. I appreciate the uh, the view. If you have any comments, let me know, leave them down below. I have links to the pen and everything else that we use today uh, in the description if you wanna check that out. And uh, you know, at least just poke around, get an idea what these things cost, see if it's something you wanna use. Um, you know, if you could like, subscribe, that would be helpful. If you have any ideas, I'm always looking for ideas. I mean, I do this for fun. I watch fights every weekend. Every weekend I cook something new for my buddies. Um, if you have an idea, something I should cook, let me know. I'm literally always looking for ideas to, to try out new stuff. So we're all set here. This pickle brine came out freaking amazing. I totally recommend it. Get yourself a briner bucket if you can. If not, you know, use a pot or something like that. Get the pickle juice. It, it adds so much moisture and, and flavor, but not too much flavor. It doesn't taste like a pickle, obviously. But it adds a ton of moisture and it gets that salt in there and it really comes out nice. So uh, like, subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions or comments and uh, see you next time.